when you predict the future, when you do so strongly and you cling to it, how much of that future do you then cause to happen? Hi guys, I'm Francesca. Welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to share with you my thoughts on what has now become one of my favorite books of all times, and that is And the Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness. A bit of a synopsis first. This book is told by the perspective of a whale. Her name is Bathsheba and she is the third apprentice of her captain. She is a hunter. This book, in fact, is set in a time where there are two main species, men and whales. They have been hunting each other for millennia and they are sworn enemies. At the beginning of the story, Bathsheba and her crew come across the remains of a human ship and they find a survivor. They take him as a prisoner because this man has a message for Alexandra, the captain of the whale ship. And the message is that Toby Wick is waiting for them at the setting sun near Three Mountains. Toby Wick is a legend. He is considered the devil himself who will wipe out all whales. And so Bathsheba and her crew set off to fight this devil. It is so complex, there's so much going on, I don't even know where to start. Prisoner is the key of the whole book, the message that I think the author was trying to convey and to communicate to his readers, the message that we have to think about and that in a small way, in a small big way, can change our life and our way to look at problems and deal with them. We have two species that have been at war with each other since the beginning of times. That is the only way that they know how to live, hunt and fight the enemy to defend yourself, to defend your world and your own way of living. And then the prisoner comes along and so the enemy is not this distant, far away, pre-construed idea, this crystallized truth that has been instilled in your mind your whole life. Suddenly the enemy is just a man and Bathsheba starts to talk to this prisoner. She starts to quote-unquote humanize him because he is not a hunter. He has never hunted whales. He doesn't want to hunt whales. He's a baker. He was dragged into this conflict that he wants nothing to do with. If this one man that she had the chance to see up close, if this one man that she had the chance to talk to is not a hunter and doesn't want to hunt, then maybe, then perhaps, not all men are hunters. Not all men are evil. Not all men are devils incarnated. That hard truth, that idea that she was living by, maybe is not as soundproof as she thought it was. So maybe the time has come to question that truth. Maybe it's time to upset the balance, to upset the status quo. Maybe it's time to challenge what has been told us by other people, by our ancestors, by our culture, and see for ourselves what we believe in, what to us feels right and what to us feels wrong. We all have some values in our lives, some truths, some ideas that we stick to that mean more than anything else to us. And it's good to have them. We need values and truths that anchor us to earth, that give us strength, that make us what we are. But the point here is, are those values, are those truths something that we chose, something that we decided to believe in, something that we are ready to fight for, that we want to live by? Or were those beliefs forced upon us when we were little perhaps, when we weren't yet able to think 
with our own minds independently before we were able to question what was being told to us. Because change is possible, change happens when we are ready to challenge what is, when we are ready to face and put up for debate the status quo. And it also made me think the fact that we are never just us. We are never just individuals. We're never just our own. We are always part of something. We're part of a culture. We're part of a community. We are part of something else. We're part of a family. The prisoner in this book isn't just a man. He is a man in the sense that he is part of the human race. So it doesn't matter that he's not a hunter. He is seen as a hunter because he belongs to the human species. In a way, that is how stereotypes work and also how sometimes, most of the times, our brains work. We see someone and we immediately put them into a category because that's how our brain works, that's how we process reality. But at the same time, we should also be able to see that individual as an individual, not as part of something bigger because if we see someone as part of a category, it's kind of like we're putting a stigma on them and it's harder for them to shake off that stigma and become something else, something different from that category that they initially belong to or that we initially put them in. I hope that I'm making some kind of sense that something is coming across and that you want to discuss that because it's, it's important. What this book is trying to say is so goddamn important. And if that wasn't enough, there is a final twist at the end of this book that I won't tell you because, spoilers, obviously, I don't want to tell you that. You have to discover that for yourself when and not if you pick this book up. But once again, that plot twist rocks the whole boat. If you don't mind the pun here. On a lighter note, Reading this book really feels like being in the whale's fins. You can tell that it's from a whale's perspective. For instance, there's this passage in the book where uh, Bathsheba is describing a human hand and I had never read a description of a hand from a perspective that was not a human perspective. So it just took me a second to realize what I was reading about. We knew from our own skeletons that the bones existed in our fins, but there was still distaste for how naked they seemed on men. The star-like spindle they used to such advantage that allowed them to make more elaborate bows than ours, despite their outer primitivism, that allowed them to weave their body coverings another art we had only learned as a spoil of hunting them, though our historians were already beginning to erase this fact and claim we'd invented weaving ourselves. See, that's how she describes a human hand from a non-human perspective, and that was just brilliant. Also, this book is just beautifully illustrated. It is so beautiful, you guys. It was just... The way these images complement the story is just... <sighs> Patrick Ness did it again. Please don't let the pictures fool you and mislead you because this is not a children's book. This is a masterpiece for all ages that everybody should read and learn from. And I just cannot recommend this enough. So this was one of the toughest videos I've ever filmed. Like there were whole minutes where I was just silent because I did not know how to explain what I was thinking and what I was feeling. And I hope that I was able to communicate to you a tiny part of what I wanted to communicate. That would be enough of a huge accomplishment to me. I would be more than satisfied if that were the case. I just, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you will pick this book up because it's, 
it's too much. I just, I can't even. I'm gonna go now because I just, I can't anymore. But yes, I'll see you tomorrow. Warm hugs.